EVs are about to become a thing of the past courtesy of Toyota's all-new engine type, which is completely unheard of. This new engine that Toyota has been working on is said to be the most eco-friendly engine in existence. Hold on to your hats, folks. The electric vehicle era might be shorter lived than we thought. Toyota is about to drop a bombshell on the automotive world with their revolutionary new engine. This isn't just any engine. It's a water-powered marvel that could completely reshape the car industry. So buckle up and get ready for a complete turnaround in the world of cars as we explore Toyota's new engine that will destroy the entire EV industry. Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. The engine that Toyota is working on is actually, believe it or not, a water-powered engine, which is relatively similar to their selves, such as the Toyota Mirai and hydrogen-powered internal combustion engines, such as the 1.6 hydrogen three-cylinder that they've recently developed. As for the history, water engines have always been one of the greatest aspiration points of the entire car industry, as they promise huge benefits over regular engines and EVs. And there have been countless attempts at making water-powered engines viable and reliable for day-to-day -day usage to no avail. And well, that's exactly where Toyota is about to jump in with their all-new water engine. As unlike most of the previous attempts which were literally been made in sheds with limited budgets, Toyota has proper funding and can actually test out the engine in all possible conditions. How does the water engine actually function? The engine itself is for all intents and purposes similar to the HHO generator with only a few minor differences that make it better suited for daily usage in vehicles. The engine itself is actually very similar to the hydrogen combustion engine found in the Toyota Yaris GRH2, except that instead of using already processed hydrogen, the engine itself processes it and separates hydrogen from oxygen by creating a chemical reaction. In essence, the engine uses a process of electrolysis to separate the H2O molecules. Hydrogen and oxygen get separated once the electrodes which are located in the tank that contains the water start emitting high voltages. Since the hydrogen itself is contained within the water when it's stored in the tank, there's no reason for heavily armored and extremely heavy tanks, which is the case with cells and hydrogen combustion engines. Since hydrogen alone is extremely hard to contain, the process of powering the vehicle is where the similarities between hydrogen combustion engines and water engines start. As after it gets separated from oxygen, hydrogen is then sent to the engine where it combusts similarly to compressed natural gas. And the overall way the engine itself functions is similar to CNG powered ones. The fuel injectors need to be adapted for compressed gas and the cylinder heads, pistons and valves need to be armored as hydrogen itself is highly combustible, making its detonation quite needy, which is why it needs stronger components. What are the long-term benefits to the environment? Well, first of all, it's almost completely zero emissions compared to regular internal combustion engines, similar to EVs while also being far more convenient than EVs. Actually, scrap that. It's more convenient than any other engine type out there as long as you have access to diluted water. You'll be able to refuel it, and it'll also cost you next to nothing. Also, there will be much less need for extracting oil as if the engine goes mainstream. The only real branch of the entire industry where fossil fuels might be used as heavy machinery or large power production units. Furthermore, there will be no need for extracting rare metals from the earth, which is one of the dirtiest processes in the entire car industry at the moment as it directly pollutes both the water sources and the soil surrounding the mine making its imminent surrounding area completely uninhabitable. Also, if we were to compare water engines to hydrogen combustion engines and cells, which are also marketed as zero emissions, we could see that they are far superior in this regard too, as storing water requires little to no effort, whereas storing hydrogen alone requires much more thought, specific conditions, and above all, much, much more money, while also being significantly more harmful to the environment. You see, Hydrogen in its sole form is a gas that is extremely hard to contain and can easily escape from the tank of a vehicle if there are any sort of irregularity with it, which means that the tanks will need to be armored, constantly monitored, and regularly taken care of. Whereas the fuel tank for water-powered vehicles can hypothetically be virtually any plastic container. Furthermore, storing hydrogen outside of the car itself is a drag too as it requires ideal temperature conditions similarly to be completely static and completely indestructible which once again costs a lot of money, whereas distilled water can be bought in any well-stocked supermarket, or if you know basic chemistry, can actually be produced at home. Also, acquiring hydrogen in its sole form is also an expensive process. 
And it combined with the numerous problems that surround the storage of the gas itself is the reason why hydrogen hasn't yet caught on and probably never will. Producing and storing hydrogen costs a lot of money, which in turn raises the price of the gas itself for the consumer, making us question why would you even buy hydrogen cars if they both are more expensive to buy and run compared to EVs and fossil fuel vehicles? So even though they're very green and logistically simple to use and run in theory, the question remains, are water engines actually daily usable? Yes, they are. First of all, they're not gutless at all as some might believe as a water-powered engine is on par with most gasoline engines and in theory, they can be made more powerful than regular internal combustion engines as they can generate up to three times more megajoules of energy compared to gasoline engines. They're also much safer than all the other engine types as no highly combustible fuels are constantly being stored inside of the car. So there's no need to worry about the car going up in flames or even exploding like fireworks going wrong. They are also very easy to produce as they're relatively simple mechanical designs, just a tad more complicated than regular gasoline engines. They're much simpler and cheaper to produce than both EVs and SEVs, and due to their nature, they would be a perfect option for motorizing countries that aren't well developed and are not rich with oil. In fact, for this reason alone, an Iranian scientist decided to convert his Peugeot 405 to run on water and actually succeeded at doing so. The scientist Aladdin Kasimi managed to produce a fully functional conversion for his old car and turned it into a true technological marvel. Imagine what Toyota could do with proper funding if a man in a shed could make a daily drivable water-powered car. Apart from being easy to produce, water-powered engines are also extremely economical compared to both gas-powered vehicles and EVs as Kasimi's own 405 average between 30 and 40 miles per gallon of water which is just fantastic because the base petrol engine used in the car could never achieve such high figures. This means that we can hypothetically see water-powered engines that can do 80 plus miles to the gallon without being completely gutless, which makes the car cost of running such cars even lower than what we initially believed it to be. However, since there were no mainstream versions of the engine type, and since there are no other car manufacturers that are actively working on this engine type, we've got to ask ourselves, are water engines the future? Well, hypothetically, yes, water engines might just be the future vehicles. However, the conclusion is not that simple as there are a myriad of issues that water engines have been experiencing in the past. First of all, there are the logistical issues. Although the infrastructure would need little to no adjustments, the engine technology is still highly experimental and most of the quote unquote functional prototypes have been very unreliable and their daily usability has been mediocre at best. Furthermore, even though using water as fuel might seem like a good way to go, the fact that it gets divided into hydrogen and oxygen makes us question the safety of the car itself. As we've already mentioned, hydrogen is extremely hard to contain and even a small leakage in the system can turn out highly dangerous and even fatal. Plus, even if Toyota were to make a reliable and safe water-powered car, who's to say that they wouldn't get shut down by lithium mining companies, battery producers, and most notably, oil companies? By using water as a fuel, we'd almost completely mitigate the usage of fossil fuels in day-to-day -day life, and there would also be little need for mining rare and expensive elements, such as cobalt and lithium, which would seriously shake and even destroy some of the most profitable companies in the world currently, such as Rio Tinto. And those companies will definitely do everything that's in their power to completely discourage further development of such engines. You don't believe us? Well. There are rumors that they've already done that some 25 years ago with the first ever officially fully functioning water-powered car. The inventor of the car, Stanley Allen Meyer, was according to him and his brother, in constant danger and was receiving constant threats from people that were most likely representatives of oil companies that could have been jeopardized by the popularization of the water engine. He was even offered millions to destroy his vehicle and the plan surrounding it and never mentioned it again. However, Meyer was a stubborn person that kept vocally fighting large oil conglomerates. One night, while at dinner with two Belgian businessmen that showed interest, Meyer suddenly ran out of the restaurant while holding his throat. His brother, who was present at the time, ran out after him. He later told the press that Stanley told him that the businessman poisoned him, after which he passed away. Official records say that the reason behind his passing is actually a brain aneurysm. However, the topic is still disputed to this day as only a few days after his unfortunate passing, his car along with the plans on how to make the engine have been stolen from his garage, never to be seen again. 
So as much as we'd love to see Toyota actually going through with this engine, we're not sure that that's going to happen anytime soon, if ever. And even if they were actually working on the engine, they are most likely doing so in absolute secrecy, which is why there are still no official confirmations on the project itself. Well, there you have it, folks. We have covered pretty much everything we know so far. One thing is for sure, though. If Toyota does go for this, it would shake up the entire industry. And by entire industry, I mean the entire world. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. Like and subscribe for more.